All right. What are we going to do today, Miss Karshner? What are we going to do today? All right. So we are in our awesome autumn art project. And today we are going to do a very cool, open the book, open the book, Miss Karshner. <gasps> cornucopia and wait a minute let's make this even cooler we're gonna paint today <laughs> yes! okay so if you have paints we're gonna use them um water-based paints if you have a tray of watercolors awesome don't don't get into that yet okay so what we're going to do turn the book miss gosh i can't see what's going on okay so what we are going to do today is called a cornucopia a cornucopia, that word is really crazy. Cornucopia. Well, that word comes from a very old language called Latin, and it means corn, corna means horn, and copia means um, a lot, it means plentiful, it means it's a whole bunch. So a cornucopia is a horn-shaped basket that has a whole bunch of stuff coming in it. And it means that we have prosperity. It means that we have a lot of food and we're gonna have an awesome, awesome winter. We had a good crop. So that's what we're gonna draw today. And if you look and see what kind of vegetables and things we're going to put in there, we have some apples and some plums and some pears and some pumpkins and some grapes. I've also put in some leaves and this really crazy, cornucopia. And let's take a look. This is what I was looking at when I drew my picture. So you can see this is like a woven basket. Looks like a horn. And then there's all kinds of stuff that's shoved inside there. Pumpkins, grapes, pears, apples. Okay, we could add tomatoes too. I added a plum. I added a purple one in mine. So today I want you to draw with a crayon. Draw with a crayon. I hate to draw with a crayon. It's okay. You're going to draw with a crayon because you need to draw really big so that we can paint things in. If you draw tiny, um, you're not going to be able to paint things in. It's going to be harder to do, okay? So if you have a sketchbook that has, let me move this. If you have a sketchbook that has thick paper in it, that's really awesome because that kind of paper is going to hold the water for your paint. If you do not, if you just have... Um, this is copy paper. If this is all you have, you can still paint on it. You just have to be very careful about how much water you put on there. But let's get drawing first. Okay, Miss Gosh, now let's. All right, so pick a color crayon that you can draw with. And we're going to start with the smallest things that we have first. So I've got a shape here, roundy kind of shape. It could be a plum. It could be a tomato. It's going to be up to you. But I'm going to start down here close to the bottom, and I'm going to add a kind of a roundy shape. But when I come around, I'm going to stop because that's where my stem is going to go, right? And I'm going to put a little rot line there because the stem is sticking out. Now, I could add um, another one here. This could be uh, like an apple, right? Put that little line there. There's my stem sticking out. I could do a pear. Now a pear is gonna have the stem at the top. So I'm gonna put a little curved line and add my stem. And a pear is kind of gonna be bigger at the bottom. Ooh, that looks more like a gourd, Miss Garshner. Okay, now it's a gourd, ha ha! Good, let's try a pear again. <laughs> I'm gonna try that little smiley face with the stem. And this time it's not gonna be as warbly in the middle. Now I have a pear. It's gonna be more pointy at the top. There, perfect. So I'm gonna add a pumpkin. Remember how we drew the pumpkins? We drew the center. We drew an oval shape in the middle. And I'm gonna come to the side and draw out and down and back over. And I might do one more. One more like that. Oh, perfect. Now my next one's gonna go a little bit behind my little squash thing, and it's gonna come out down here. Hey, looking good, pumpkin head. And there's my stem. 
okay? Now, let's do, uh, we can do an apple. If you're first grade, second grade, we've drawn apples. Kindergarten, welcome to apples. We're just gonna draw kind of a circle shape around my stem. That little line there is gonna help make the stem look like it's coming out of the fruit. I could add some grapes. Grapes are just gonna be bunches of circles. So you need to be very careful bigger circles at the top. Some of those circles could be a little bit behind, like maybe they're coming out from behind my apple. You might say there's a little piece of a circle there. Okay, I'm going to bring it down here. And then I'm just going to make some circles line them up here in between. They snuggle up next to each other. And I'm going to bring it down to where it comes out to just a few grapes that kind of lean out like that. That looks pretty good. I like that. Um, I could put in, I could put a grape right here too. Just a piece of a grape. All right. Oh my gosh, that's looking good. So just big shapes for fruit. Now, let's do our cornucopia, our horn of plenty. So I'm gonna do a rainbow shape here. I'm gonna make it go right about here. And then I'm gonna add on the part that look, makes it look like a horn. But first, let's do a rainbow shape. Not, you bring it down here. So it looks like our fruit is coming out of this. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna come around. My rainbow shape goes here. That's the inside of my horn of plenty, okay? So I'm gonna do one more band, just like that, because it's braided on the edge like that, okay? Yeah, that's the, that's the inside. My fruit's gonna come out of it. We're gonna put more fruit right there. Now, let's make the part that looks like it goes back and gets tiny, because remember, it's a horn, right? Do we need to see that again? See how it looks like it gets tiny back there, okay? So I'm gonna draw another rainbow shape around, but it's not gonna start over there, it's gonna start here. It's gonna come around. Let's make one smaller. Don't start up here, start over here. And around. <gasps> See how it's bending? Let's do another one here. Around. Now, I'm gonna start making it get smaller this way. So I'm not gonna go all the way down here to my apple. I'm gonna start it here, I'm gonna come around, and I'm gonna end it. Oh, see that? Now it's going up in the air. Check that out. Just a couple more, just a couple, maybe one more little, oh, there's my horn of plenty. That'll work. That looks kinda cool. Now to make it look like our fruit is coming out of the basket, let's add some more stuff inside. So I could add, I could add um, another little pumpkin in here. Okay, we could add him back there, not drawing all of him, I'm drawing pieces of him, I'm going backwards. And I might add some more grapes back in here. What else? Oh, let's add a leaf. Wanna add a leaf? We did rubbing, so we know what leaves look like, right? So I could add a leaf here. Um, yeah, let's add a leaf. I'm gonna add a leaf. If you don't wanna add a leaf, then don't. Make up a leaf shape right there. And don't forget the veins that go in there, right? Maybe I could add a leaf shape down here. I could come out. Remember that oak leaf goes around like that, doesn't it? Did you see oak leaves on your walk the other day? I did. Lots of them. Ha ha! So now it looks like my leaves coming out from underneath my grapes. So if you want to add some more, if you want to add some leaf shapes up here that you can paint in, you can decorate the outside. Ooh, Miss Costa, what kind of leaves are you making? I don't know, I'm just adding designs. It's okay. 
Oh, but I am gonna have to make like a table or something. I'm gonna make a line here to make it look like my stuff is sitting on there. Okay, hey, that looks pretty good. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about paint. If you don't have a tray of watercolor paints, they're not expensive. You can pick them up a lot of places, like even like the dollar store and stuff like that. And get yourself a little tray of paint so you can paint in your sketchbook. If you don't have a sketchbook that has thick paper, if you are only drawing, not only, but if you are drawing on this kind of paper, like I said, you can still use paint, but you have to be very careful about the water because it'll get uh, too wet and fall apart, okay? <clears throat> Miss Kashna, I do not have paint. Okay, well, you can use, look, I'm trying to figure out where my paints are gonna go. You can use crayons, you can use colored pencils, you can use, mar I wouldn't use markers, but I would use either crayons or colored pencils. That would work too. All right, so when you are painting with these kinds of waters, watercolor paints, you do not pour water into, don't take the cup, pour the water in, no. You can, if it's brand new, you could take your cup of water and you could put a little drop on each one to kind of soften them up, just kind of wake the color up a little bit. But you're not pouring water on, and that's only if they are super duper dry and you or you just got them, just to kind of wake it up a little bit. So when you paint, and you use watercolors. Um, we're gonna start with the lightest colors first, and then we're gonna work our way darker. So look around and see what you have. What are you going to paint with the lightest color? What's the lightest color in the tray? Yellow. So think about where can you put yellow? Remember when we were coloring our pumpkins? We used some yellow on the top of our pumpkins to make it look like um, it had a little bit of light shining on it. So I'm gonna take my paintbrush, get a little bit of water on there, wipe off the drip, and now I'm going to take my paints and I'm gonna pull my brush this way towards me. And every once in a while, I'm gonna roll it a little bit. Keep those little hairs together. The more you wipe your brush on that color, the more color you're going to have, okay? So don't just wipe across once and then say, it's not this yellow, Miss Costa, it doesn't work. Well, that's because you didn't wipe your brush enough. Get in there, wipe, 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 wipe. This yellow had a little bit of green in there, Blech. but that's okay. It's still gonna work because that little bit of green on my pumpkin isn't gonna be bad. Now, I'm gonna start at the top, stay inside your lines. You have to be careful. And I'm gonna pull down a little bit of yellow. I'm gonna do the same thing in the next one. Okay, I'm just gonna do two to start with. All right, now I'm gonna get a little bit more water on my brush and I'm gonna go into my orange and I'm gonna get a little bit of orange. Now in here, I'm gonna take my orange and I'm gonna bring it up. Oh, bring it up, Miss Karshner? Yes, I'm gonna bring it up into my yellow and then I'm gonna come down. Stay out of your pear. Your pear is not orange, but look what's happening. Ooh, ooh, Miss Goshner, that's looking very cool, I like it. Get a little bit of water, and I'm gonna mix it just a little bit. I'm gonna leave some of it yellowy at the top, and I'm just gonna pull my paints down. Think about what size paintbrush you're using because you need to use the right tool for the job. Ooh, look how pretty that pumpkin is. I like it. Now, I'm doing one section at a time. If I bump into my line, the line is gonna stay there. I'm gonna get a little bit more water, wipe a little more on my brush, and I'm gonna come up into that yellow and let it mix up a little bit. I have to do it while my yellow is a little bit wet so it doesn't leave that hard line. See, I'm pulling my paints, just kind of pulling that water around. Ooh, I need a little bit more water. I'm gonna take it away. I rinsed my brush a little bit. I kind of shook it around a little bit, got rid of some of that water. And I'm gonna come up here and kind of 
mix that together. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look how pretty that is. That looks really good. All right, let's do it on the next one. Rinse your brush really good because I have to go back into the yellow now. See how I kind of have to move quick. I can't be dawdling around. I want to put some yellow at the top. And I'm going to put my yellow over here, too. I'm going to bring it around a little bit, see? Try to stay inside your lines. I'm going to rinse my brush a little, get some orange on there. And I'm going to come from the bottom up into my orange. Oh, whoa. Check that out. I love the way that mixes. It looks so cool. Don't get your paper soaked full of water. Control how much water. Control where you're putting your brush. Watch. See how I'm not flattening my brush down. I'm just running the edge of it and letting the paint come off of my brush and onto the paper. Man, that looks so cool. Look at that. Look how it's mixing. Okay, I'm going to pull it up a little. Whoa. I like that. I'm going to come up along that edge there and mix that in just a little bit more. See how my blue line is there? I'm going to put a little, a little bit of blue. <laughs> That's so cool. I hope you're painting. Ah, pause when you need to, but stick with me because I'm going to show you some little neat tricks like this for painting your stuff. So, anything else needs to be orange? What about that pumpkin back there? Yes, Miss Cash, that pumpkin back there needs to be orange. So I'm not gonna start with the yellow because he's tucked inside. But I am gonna start with some orangey color and I'm just gonna fill in one section and then do the next one. And then, uh-oh, I'm starting to run out of paint. So I'm just gonna come back and get a little more. Did I need more water? No because there's water on my brush and there's a little bit of water in that paint already. So I'm just gonna come in here. Oh, look at that. So when we paint, we're gonna be working with darks and lights, just like we do with the crayons. I had you push hard in spots, don't push hard in spots. And that's what we can do with the paint. That's what makes our paintings look so wonderful, is we get those darks and lights both in the same part. Now, too much water is going to make your paper buckle up. So just kind of easy does it. Okay. Okay, Miss Koshna. Anything else? What about my pear? My little pear back here, he could use some yellow. So I'm going to rinse my brush. Have I used black yet? No. What about purple? No. I'm just using these little colors here are related. So I'm going back to my yellow because my pear is probably has some yellow in there. So I'm going to start with some yellow on my pear, but I'm not going to just go around the top. I'm just going to come down here. If you made your pear, if you made that one look like a pear, then you could paint that one like a pear too. But I did not. It's now a gourd. Okay, so rinse it a little bit. I'm going to get a little bit of green, not a lot. Remember, I'm going to start down here. I'm going to come up into my yellow. Oh, look at it mixing. Oh! That's so cool. I kind of drag it up and let it mix in. Now bring those two colors together. Oh, look at that. <gasps> I love it. I love to paint. Miss Costner loves to paint. Do you love to paint? I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Now I've got some green on my uh, brush. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to put some green in my stem. You can do that. Any other stems you want to paint green while you've got green? Uh, look, my baby, don't go in there, don't go in there. Ah! Uh-oh, look what I did. My finger moved the paint. Cool. I also have some leaves. They might have a little bit of green in them. I'm just going to add a little bit of green. Look at all the water and a little bit of paint makes that green really light green. A lot of green paint is going to make it really dark. What else needs to be green? I think that's about it. Maybe I'll add a little bit of green into my leaf up here. Oh, that looks pretty good. I kind of like that, but not a lot. I'm just going to add some. All right, I'm going to rinse my brush. Where am I going next? Where am I going next? Where am I going next? I'm going to go to my red apple. 
I'm not gonna put any yellows in there. I'm just gonna start with my red. Ooh, that's a pretty red, isn't it? Now, maybe I want my red apple to just be a red apple. So I'm just gonna paint it red, but I can have different kinds of reds. I can have red that's a little bit lighter up here and a little darker down here. Now, I'm not gonna go get any more water, but I'm gonna wipe my brush a little more and I'm gonna come in here with my red and just drag it, tap it in there. Tap it, tap it, tap it in there. And see that crayon is kind of helping my paint stay where I want it to stay. A little bit of darkness down there helps make it look like it's round. See where my green ran into my red? Oh, that's okay. I'm not gonna be too upset. I might make this a little red down here too. Maybe these, oh, you know what? We could have added cherries. We could have made a bunch of little round cherries, each one of them with its own little stem. That would have been cute. So I'm gonna make some red in here since I have red on my paintbrush. See how I'm making it round. I'm gonna get a little bit of water. I'm gonna come into my purple, just wipe my brush in my purple and I'm gonna say plum. You are a purple plum. And I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna mix this in there too. Because sometimes purple plums have a little bit of red in them. Oh, that looks pretty cool. I kinda like that. Are you mixing colors in there? Now red and purple can mix together because red and blue make purple. I'm not going to mix purple and orange because um, they will not like each other. What else can I make purple? What else can I make purple? How about my grapes? Can I do my grapes? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm going to go back and get my paintbrush purple. And I'm going to come inside each purple grape. Are you painting with me? Look practice staying inside. Remember we've talked about going with markers. You go inside first. Do each individual grape. I know it's so hard, Ms. Gardner. It's hard. I want to just do all my grapes. There's like whoosh. It's okay. Don't do it. You have to have some self-control and just do one grape at a time. That way they look grapey. And see that little spot that I missed? I'm not gonna fill that in. I'm gonna leave it, because it might look like a little light spot on each little grape. I'm not gonna leave them on purpose. I'm not gonna say, I'm gonna leave a little white spot. You could, if you knew what you were doing. Some people do, some people know how to do that. I'm just gonna paint, and if there happens to be a spot that's left like that, you can use little teeny tiny little ones right there. I'm gonna leave them alone. All right. All right. So I hope you are painting. Stay inside your lines. Um, if you do not have paint and you can get some little tray of watercolor paint, anything's better than nothing. We want to paint, don't we? I do. I want to have some lessons. I want you to practice. Um, thicker paper in your sketchbook is awesome for paint. If you don't have thicker paper, you just have to be more careful. You can't have puddles of water on your paper or it's going to make a mess. Okay? Okay, Miss Kashna. I will be very careful with my paints. Remember, when you are finished painting, you need to rinse your brush under cool water, not hot water, and store it with as little hairs up. Don't store it in a cup down like this. This is just where it sits while you're waiting to use it. When it's done, it's dry like this, so your little hairs stay in a point. So you can get into all these tiny little spots. Oop, little grapes up here too. Little tiny spots. Keep control, slow down, and get into your little spots. This little practice thing, it's awesome. Practice in your sketchbook. Make it awesome. All right. A bigger brush 
I'm going to use a bigger brush and the brown to do these parts. Whoa, look at all that. Yeah, I have to stay in my line, don't I? See how I did not start at my stem? I started away from it just in case I make a mistake. So I can now, I can come down just a little and bring it around. And we'll pull that puddle. That was too much water on my brush. So I'm gonna do it again here. Don't start on the fruit. Now, am I painting the whole thing and going brrrr? No, nope, I'm doing one at a time. Bigger brush, bigger area. Little area, little brush. And don't start right up there next to it. That way you don't make a mistake and go, ah! That's what I do. I go, ah! I make a mistake. There, see I can pull, just with my brush I can pull a little bit. And see my brush still has water on it. I even have a puddle right here. I can take some of that water and pull it, use it again. Use that paint up here for my smaller areas. And I haven't gotten any more paint on my brush. But look, so look what's happening to my color. It's getting lighter and lighter as I go back. Keep your brush up on your tiptoes like a little ballerina up on her toes. Up on her toes. Ah, looks pretty good, huh? Now when we go inside here, I want you to wipe your brush a little bit more and get in there with a little darker. Wipe your brush a little bit more to get inside for a bit a little darker, okay? All right. This is looking so cool. So where these shadows we're making in the highlights, shadows are the dark spots, highlights are the light spots. These are helping our picture look really, really awesome. <clears throat> Practice these. Don't be satisfied with just painting everything one color. Try and mix them up just a little bit. See what you get, okay doke? So I need to do my gourd and my, <clears throat> what the heck is that? Is that another pear? Did we say that was a pear? I think that was a pear. All right, get in there, pear. I think that was a pear. Almost looks like a strawberry. Strawberries aren't in season right now. Strawberries are summertime. We're looking for fall stuff. Ooh, look, see how that's lighter right there? I'm gonna leave that alone. So it's not all one color. And then what color are these guys? They're more like a tan color, aren't they? So I'm gonna maybe start with my yellow for my gourd. Oh, my gourd! <laughs> I'm gonna get a little bit of brown on my brush and mix my yellow and my brown. Whoa, look how cool that looks. Now be careful, stay inside your line so your paints don't mix. And pull, see how I'm pulling away from my shapes. Oh yeah. But Miss Kirshner, I have a big giant puddle and it's soaking into my other colors. Look out, look out, look out. Okay, 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 okay. So here's what you can do. You can take a paper towel. You can take a Kleenex. You can take a little, a twist, twist it, twist it into a little corner and go, no, 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 run in there. And soak it up a little bit. Okay, so if it's getting too, oh no. I see it. Okay, so I'm going to take a little corner here. I'm going to dab it, not wipe. Pick up. Ah! I was able to pick up that little puddle. It soaked it up. There we go. That's pretty good. There. Ta-da! Ooh, look what it kind of did right there, too. It looks cool. I like it. I like it like that. So you can take a Kleenex or a paper towel and just look. I'm going to twist it into a little point, and I can soak it up. Watch it goes and it's gone right down the end.
All right, so finish painting. Don't forget to do the bottom. Don't forget to do your leaves, right? Make them beautiful. Ooh, I used green on that leaf. I'm gonna use some red, but if I mix my two colors together, I'm gonna get a pretty poopy color. It's gonna be browny kinda, which is fine on your leaves if that's what you want. I might, I might want it in some spots. Okay, I'm gonna leave you to go. Remember, take a picture, put it in the slide, show me what you did, turn your work in. If you don't turn your work in, you didn't do it. So turn it in. Oh, let's do some painting. Oh, that's good. Oh, let's try this. See if I can soak some of that up. Oh, I can. Oh, I can. Oh, I kind of like that. Oh, I kind of like that. All right. Have fun, you guys. Show me what you did. I love you. See you later. Bye.